<laughs> yeah, I would seriously do that. In a heartbeat. <laughs> okay, I'll be John for the rest of the show. Fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, whenever you're ready, if you need a countdown, I can give you a countdown. Otherwise, just do it. All right. Uh, let me get a drink of water first. <laughs> I wouldn't have needed the water. <laughs> That's because you drink Mountain Dew. is always ready to go. <laughs> this is Sith Lord Bane from... Uh, wow. That you want to try that again? <laughs> <laughs> well... You can say the darkness if you'd like. <laughs> or a pit prison of some kind. <laughs> we or have cable heaven. there. After Princess Diaries blew you up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is Sith Lord Bane from Darkness, and you're listening to Azeroth's Roundtable. <laughs> I actually got him to say from Darkness. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, it's going to be another one of those, isn't it? <laughs> Welcome to Azeroth Roundtable, episode 103. My name is Ben Bumhoffer, and with me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Ben, I am so full. We went to Boston Market before this show. Yes, we did. And uh, I ate all of the Boston Market. <laughs> like the whole building, the whole, everything. The whole thing, it's gone. It's in my stomach, making me sleepy. We're not having a nap in the middle of the show. We've talked about this. <laughs> yeah. All right. But other than that, I'm great, Ben. It was good. I'm just uncomfortable. Okay. Good to know. And uh, joining us this week is someone who has been waiting patiently for about three months or so to get on the show. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to welcome Bane. Welcome to the show, Bane. Hey, how's it going? Doing pretty good. Um, <laughs> now, the biggest reason why we wanted to have Bane on is because he sent a, a topic idea in that was great, that totally worked for a huge roundtable topic episode and everything. And then there were scheduling conflicts and then other people showed up and then breaking news happened. And then John and I were like, hey, let's do a just an us episode for this or let's do a call in show for this and everything. So finally, after three months, <laughs> welcome to the show. Yay! <laughs> Turns out, three months later, topic's still relevant. Yeah. <laughs> Who <would have> thought? <laughs> yeah, which is really good. So, um, Bane, welcome to the show, and I gotta ask, um, what have you been up to, either uh, in or out of WoW? Well, as far as WoW goes, I've been logging in and doing my daily stuff, and then logging out and getting on play, uh, Payday 2. <laughs> good. good. Pretty, much, pretty much all I've been doing for the past three months <laughs> yeah a lot of people are doing that these days <laughs> just <laughs> logging in logging out <laughs> next day logging in logging out <laughs> yeah uh john how about you what have you been up to uh that actually sounds a lot like what i've been up to um i've had a crazy week ben uh i did manage to raid with you guys a little bit uh that was exciting because we 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 weren't doing personal loot, Ben. <laughs> yep. Uh, I live in a world that has uh, adopted personal loot as my one true loot method. And when I right-clicked the boss and saw a whole wall of purple, I had a momentary uh, bit of excitement, followed by confusion, followed by disappointment, and followed by bitter, bitter anger. Yeah. And who are you mad at, John? <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish we could put in just like right at that moment, just that clip from uh, the professional, which is everyone. Because that's <laughs> like, it's just weird because loot is. <sighs> loot can be such a weird thing in the game. Like I've gotten so used to just right clicking. Did I get anything? Didn't I get anything? And going on about my day and having it go back to being a whole to-do 
uh, was really, really weird. And so I was just like, man, now I remember why this is not the right loot method. So that's my PSA to the world out there. Yeah. Personal loot is the right way. I agree with you. Um, but anyway, so I raided a little bit. I didn't have time to raid the full night or much at all. Uh, I haven't had a ton of time to play, but as we have established on this show, turns out my uh, garrison followers are better at the game than I am, and they've gotten me lots of loot upgrades. So Good. I'm, I'm doing better there than I am when I actually raid. I got new shoulders from... Blackrock Foundry, which we haven't even downed a boss in, so I mean, they got a leg up on us there. Their, their progression is off the charts. I couldn't be more proud of this group. They came together, they really gave it their all, Ben. Yeah. And you have, what, like four tanks and three people who know how to get out of fire? and I don't know how I managed to get the perfect compilation for garrison followers on my monk, it's funny because, like, playing on my rogue and looking at what I have there, it's a startling reminder of how lucky I got with all my followers. Because mm -hmm. I feel like almost every mission I send them on is 100%. They just go off, they do it, they get stuff done. My rogue, I'm happy if I see 80% on a mission. I'm like, all right, cool, we're going to do it. We're going to go with it. So, uh yeah, it's been a lot of that. I haven't done a whole lot of WoW stuff. Uh, my Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse addiction uh, continued to spiral out of control. <laughs> um, I've beaten the game. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I feel strongly about my character. Um, I got lots of cool stuff. Got some wigs, some hats. <laughs> uh, I learned from Vegeta. Ooh. He taught me everything he knows. Is he uh, a jerk? So did so did Piccolo. Well, that's good. Yeah. I, I could shoot a special beam cannon if I wanted to. I don't want to, though. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've been playing a lot of that. Well, let me ask you really quick, because I'm curious. Can you okay. become a Super Saiyan since you chose Saiyan as your race? <clears throat> yes, but it okay. was very difficult. And here's the weird thing. I can actually become a Super Saiyan 2. Huh. Uh, I managed to unlock that. It completely broke the game. <laughs> Um, because basically what they do is the game has an energy meter. Mm -hmm. Sorry, everybody who doesn't want to hear about Dragon Ball Z. You're going to have to hear about Dragon Ball Z for a minute. A game has an energy meter. When you go Super Saiyan, that energy meter starts draining very fast. But you can do unlimited special moves while it is active. So you can do your ultimate damage move and all that. So okay. I got that. And then I got the ability to do a power-up. So I actually recreated the authentic Dragon Ball experience, which is I fired a bunch of stuff at my enemies, then I powered up until the energy bar was full again, and then fired a bunch of stuff at my enemies, and then just kept repeating that over and over again <laughs> so that I'd never depower. So uh, that's what I did, and like I said, it, broke, it completely broke the game. Okay. So... Uh, that was exciting, and that was fun. And I have also been uh, reading the Codex Alera series by Jim Butcher, who also wrote the Dresden Files. Mm -hmm. And there is an enemy in that book series that might as well be the Zerg from StarCraft, and oh. it has made me really want to play StarCraft. So Erlina will be happy to know that I will probably be talking about StarCraft in the near future. Good to know. Good to know. What have I been doing, you ask? Well, <laughs> have I got a story for I you. I was trying to decide if I had anything else. I played I played one game of Heroes of the Storm without you guys. We <gasps> typically play on Friday night, and we stopped last Friday right before I unlocked the Tassadar Hero Portrait unlock. <laughs> so the next day I said, forget this, and I went in and I played a match by myself. Okay. Well, not by myself. I had a team, but I didn't care about them. But we won. Sure. You know why we won? Because you were Tassadar. One, one word. It's one word. Tassadar? That's the word. Okay. <laughs> ben, what did you do this week? <laughs> well, golly, John, let me tell you. 
Um, so due to, you know, garrison missions and raiding and LFRing the last boss of raid and all that fun stuff, um, Monday night I was sitting at 120 alligator stones. So Tuesday came around and you know what? I queued for the last boss of Hymal because he dropped six and I needed five. So did that, uh, went to go turn that in, did a quest, and uh, Cargath liked me so much, he put a ring on it. Sexy. Yeah. So uh, I'm a legendary ring. Did well, you... first bit or something. So you have now heard the erotic uh, Cadgar dialogue. Probably. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but sure. You should have paid better attention. I didn't remember. Like, I remember things you say. All right, fine. Yeah, I so I have that, and I actually did notice a, a, a quite a bit of a jump in my numbers from last night's raid to from the, the previous Thursday. Partly because I was there the whole time, but <laughs> the, the <laughs> Thursday previous to that as well. So, yeah, that ring, it makes a difference. So, yay! I'm, yeah, kind of happy about that. Um, also that night... Uh, Aludra and I went into Firelands because she's been farming to get all the different bits for the legendary staff and everything. And uh, I've been going in because I want to get that um, uh, pure blood Firehawk mount. So, you know, we go in, we get the last bit that she needs. We go and fight Ragnaros so, so that she finishes the whole quest. So she finished it. We were all, yay! Then he looted the boss and guess what dropped? The pure blood Firehawk. So, yay! <laughs> and uh, I just have one Did more achievement win? in there. What? You win the role for it? Oh, yeah. we. One of, the reason that I've been going is for that and to hang out with her. The reason oh. she's been going is to get the stuff and hang out with me. So it, it worked well. So she just passed on it and everything. But, well, that was uh, nice of her. Oh, very much so. But I'd uh, have rolled. And while I would have lost to you, I would have totally taken it had I gotten it. I know. And I would have yelled, finally, you deserve this. <laughs> and I would have linked it eight times in a whisper to you. <laughs> And said, you deserve this one more time. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's true. <laughs> but I have it now. And uh, now I can do the, the final achievement that I need to get the Corrupted Firehawk, which is uh, the Penitent, where you know everybody needs to ne run and kneel and run and kneel and run and kneel. I and... need that too, so I will help you with that. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Then we need uh, four other people. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I didn't try to get a whole bunch of people to come with me for it is because if we got to Ragnaros and then the mount dropped and I didn't get it, I'd be sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you wanted to be greedy. Pretty much. Yeah. The penitent oh, man isn't that. greedy, Ben. <laughs> no, the the penitent man is humble. He kneels before God. Kneel. Nobody on the audio version knows that you just reenacted the whole scene in your chair somehow, but you did. I did. And good for you for doing that. Yeah, thank you. Did um, you do anything else, Ben, involving pets, maybe? Yes, I did, John. How funny that you know that. Um, I am one pet away from getting raiding, raiding with Leashes 3. three. Uh, I just need the Fragment of Suffering, and it's fitting that I haven't gotten it yet. Uh, the good news is that that's the same exact one that Eludra needs as well, so we're still going uh, neck and neck for that. So, yeah. But uh, last but not least, you want to know what I've been doing, John? I've got two words for you. Tess uh, Dar. Nope, that's three. Shit. <laughs> that's one! <laughs> not syllables. <laughs> well, I'll give you a hint. It starts with mass. and ends with effect. Adar? Oh, effect! I love mass effect. <laughs> Yep, uh, I decided that it's been way too long and I want to play the game again. And so I I was at uh, about halfway through the first one. Um, I, I picked up Liara, I was on Novaria, and then I hadn't gone to um, Illos or Vermeer or what's the other one? Oh, well, whatever. I haven't it's been had, a long time since I've played yeah. Mass Effect as well. <laughs> so finished that up, uh, you know, killed... Uh, Deanna Troy's Deanna Troy and then went did all the rest of the stuff and I'm spoilers um I killed Rex you bastard but how could you do that <laughs> because 
I'll tell you after the show, but there's a reason. There's one reason why I'm doing that. You're a cold, heartless, mm-hmm. evil human being who hates cool guys. No, I killed him and sacrificed him so that another cool guy can live in Mass Effect 3. Who? We'll talk about it after the show. No, who? I want to know right now. What's I know, his name? No, no, I know what someone cool who guy? listens, who actively is p- playing through the Mass Effect series, and I don't want to ruin this part. Okay, person who's actively playing, turn off the audio for one second. Who? <laughs> Morden. Dude, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'm doing it. You are an evil person. Everybody, you should play Mass Effect, but you shouldn't do what Ben does. Well, look, Rex I've is already a cool played guy through... who will stand on your ship mm-hmm. and say Shepard every time you talk to him. Rex? Shepard. Shepard. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I've gone through my Paragon route. I've played all the way through that, and I absolutely love it. I'm playing through as a kind of renegade because I'm doing horrible things at certain times. But, John, it's really hard to be mean to Tally. Just, I can't. Because it's Tally, and Tally's awesome. But apparently I can be really mean to Rex. So, like, really mean. Not that Tally, though. No. But the funny thing is, is after I did that, I went and talked to all the crew members, because you know they're there, and every single one of them was like, good job, you did the right thing. I'm like, wow, you guys hated him. I know. Everybody on that ship's a jerk like you. Yep. We're all like Ashley. We're all spacists. (laughs) Ashley was the worst. Totally. Ashley was the worst. For all you people killed off Caden and kept Ashley around, you're the worst. Well, John, guess what? (laughs) (laughs) You're the worst, Ben. Well, no, here's the thing. Because, you know, I play as Femshep. Um, I was actually getting her close and starting a relationship with Caden and got to the point where, you know, had he lived, that whole scene would have played out. So your thought process was... He likes me. I better set off a <laughs> nuclear bomb next to him and well, the solve big thing, this problem right now. No, the big thing that I'm wondering is, is how are they going to like carry that through the rest of the series? Because, you know, I've, I've played through with Liara as being the love interest and then me totally dropping her because she was like cold to me and then went with Thane. And seeing the story stuff that developed with him in the third one was really cool and so touching. And She was cold to me, so I went with Thane. <laughs> it's a game. But anyway, so I'm curious to see what's actually going to happen throughout the whole series now um, without, t- you know, having any sort of love interest and how that affects the gameplay and all that. So seriously, guys, go play Mass Effect. It's fun. You know what? Hearing you talk about Mass Effect has reminded me the way people talk about Mass Effect when they when they talk about it. It sounds like somebody who's way into reality TV <laughs> yes. talking about a reality TV show. <laughs> it is true. the exact same thing. Yeah, I was really a fan of Liara early on, but then she was really mean, so I decided to drop her, and I really, I went after Thane, like, I felt like he was just much warmer. Then I was really and, surprised when they voted me off the island. I mean, it was a total <laughs> blind side. Yeah, it just, it's, it's, that's what it sounds like. Right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get off of my uh, reality show and go right into the News! News! news. Hey, Bane. Hey, what? Did you know that the BlizzCon dates were announced? I did. Super excited. Have you Are ever you been going to BlizzCon? to BlizzCon? I sure hope so. I didn't get to make it last year because scheduling for work. <laughs> yeah. But I have my ticket. <laughs> oh, that's ben and I are going to just continue In to ask hotel. you two different questions at the same time and assume <laughs> that whatever you say is the answer to both of the questions. <laughs> So have you Um, gone before? (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, have you you ever been to BlizzCon? Because I couldn't tell if you were answering my question or Ben's. (laughs) No, I haven't been to BlizzCon yet. I really wanted to go last year, but wasn't able to. Well, congratulations on the ticket, at least. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Were Were you able to sell it? No. It was I, it was like a last minute work thing that was like oh well okay <laughs> oh that's, that's two hundred dollars <laughs> if work gives me a last minute thing 
I go to Anaheim and I say, I'm sorry, I'd love to help, but I'm in Anaheim. I don't know how this happened. Well, I mean, I'm ended just... up here by accident, I assure you. I'm just glad I was going to drive down instead of flying, because then I would have had that ticket as well. Yeah, you, you probably really looked bad. out that way. Now, were you able to get the uh, the swag bag or anything at least? No, I didn't get anything from him. Oh. I sent an email to him and stuff like that and uh, asked him for anything, like if I could have something, and nope. That's a bummer. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Sad. That is really sad, actually. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got the virtual ticket. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now you have all the stuff. Prize. You get to watch the virtual ticket and experience the place you would be live on the internet. I actually, I will say this. One of my favorite things that Blizzard does is give people who buy the BlizzCon tickets a virtual ticket as well. Mm -hmm. I used that so much last year because I wasn't going to panels. Yeah. <laughs> but I wanted to see them. Yeah, in all honesty, I think that last year we probably spent um, a bunch more time actually in the show than we did the previous year. But we saw less and less and less of the panels last year than the year before. Yeah, we do something different at BlizzCon every year, I feel like. Um, you know, two years ago, I feel like we were... I felt like we spent so much of the show like holding good seats for mm -hmm. things because we just went from panel to panel to oh, panel yeah. and like took turns seeing things on the show floor. And then the year after that, we were over at the Guild Hall almost the entire event, almost to the point where we said, hey, we, maybe we shouldn't get BlizzCon tickets anymore. Maybe and we then we go. bought BlizzCon tickets. Yeah, then we <laughs> then we did it again anyway. And turns out that was the year that we went and spent a ton of, of time on the show floor doing things. And we ignored all the panels. So uh, who knows what we're going to do this year? <laughs> we're just going to spend the whole time at Disneyland. We're going to spend the whole time looking in through the glass doors making orphan faces. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll hand out napkins at one of the food trucks or something. Hey, what's going get, on in there? What's, we what's should the get news? parody religion signs and stand out there. <laughs> hey, it could work. Yeah, but... Um, if you're looking for BlizzCon tickets, it'll uh, be happening November 6th and 7th. And then uh, tickets are going on sale April 15th at 7 p.m. Pacific and April 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific. So good luck. Uh, they're going to be going through Eventbrite again. And I know uh, last year some people had some problems. Um, I technically did, but because of those problems, I was actually able to get a ticket because, you know, a lot of people would say that they want four and then wait and wait and wait. And then those tickets were technically being held slash sold, but then they weren't. And then they went back into the queue. So after refreshing a few times, I was actually able to get in and get mine. So yay. Yeah. yeah we'll see. Buying tickets is always the scariest part. Mm -hmm, we find definitely. out in a month, man. Yes. Ugh, I've n I have always been able to get, blizzcon tickets but it always terrifies me every single year um because i feel like i've been lucky for so long now that it's time for my number to be up well i think last year i got in before you on the second round because i mean it's a game that you play even though if you have a ticket you'll try again just to see if you can get in uh-huh i do yeah. I try both days, and I've always gotten tickets on the first day. I always try the second day as well. <laughs> I don't buy tickets, though. So for all you people that think I'm just, like, taking up space, I don't buy a ticket. I just want to see if I could get one if I tried. <laughs> I like the challenge. Yep. Yep. <laughs> just, like, living on the edge. And uh, Alessander in the chat room asks, uh, have you accepted Tassadar as your lord and savior? Yes. <laughs> Thanks for ben, that. I really like Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why we're going to be playing afterwards. All right. Okay. Well, let's take a seat uh, at... Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, yep. no. Yep. Let's uh, do that. Uh, I was, uh, was going to yep. support how excited I was about BlizzCon. Yep. Okay, well, go ahead. How excited are you about BlizzCon? Very excited. <laughs> uh, on, a, on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, 
uh, what what number would you put yourself at? I would say I'm at a uh, reserved seven currently, um, but that will go up once I have a ticket. Early prediction time. Um, what do you think the the digital pet for World of Warcraft will be? Your mom. <laughs> Let's take a seat at the round table. Shut it! Round, round table. table. And welcome to the round table where we discuss in depth the issues that mean the most to us, the players. This week's round table topic is all about the loneliness of garrison life. It's so lonely. So, so <laughs> lonely. You just play crickets. <laughs> I'm so lonely. So lonely. Yes. Just control yourself. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> well, Bane sent a letter in on, well, okay, an email in. I mean, unless he really wrote it out. And, how'd you get my address? Anyways, um, sent, an, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sent an email in on December 15th. So it really has been three months. Like, I'm not kidding. Three months. Wait, it was just that four. So three months. So I didn't know if you actually wanted to read it or if you just want to kind of give us a, a brief overview of, uh, you know, the idea of what what you had an idea as a topic. Uh, basically, what I was saying was that it's pretty interesting as to how, like, there's not very many people around, like, you know, Orgrimmar, Stormwind, and any of the major cities and stuff anymore because uh, the garrisons... Uh, since they're zoned and there's no real reason to leave them, that it's just really interesting to see that uh, there's no real social interaction anymore compared to how the game used to be. You're kind of right. I mean, something that uh, John's brought up before and has talked about is the fact that, you know, a lot of the time he'll just just log in. <laughs> I hate you, John. <laughs> Just log in, um, you know, do his garrison stuff and then leave. I mean, I know, John, you've said that uh, part of it is the fact that you've been really busy at work and everything. Yeah, it's it's been really difficult for me lately to actually log into the game and be able to have time to play. And on one hand, garrisons provide a nice way to continue to feel like I'm unlocking things, getting things. But... Uh, at the same time, there's also a part of me that wonders if the fact that it is such a bite-sized, small, quick chunk of gameplay that you can just say, all right, I did this thing that you feel okay about logging off. Like, could I maybe spend a little bit more time if it wasn't such a, a quick, fast thing? Or, you know, d it, does it need to be something bigger? You know, it doesn't... I, I wonder, like, okay, so I maybe take five minutes to mm -hmm. play around in my garrison, right? Like, that's about how long it takes to complete my missions and start up new missions. I've got more than five minutes to play WoW. I know I do. But I can feel good about that as a starting and stopping point. So once that's done, I say, okay, well, that's it. If that wasn't an option, would I maybe find something that was 15 or 20 or 30 minutes to maybe take up its place? And then would that be what I was doing instead? So part of me wonders if the bite-sized nature of it is actually a detriment to the game. That is, you know, it, it's a really good question. I mean, um, Bane, you said that pretty much you've just been logging in and out, just doing your whole garrison as well, right? Yeah, pretty much. All I do is log in, do my missions, do my daily crafting things that are, eh, and then get back out and go play some payday <laughs> okay well question for you um what are you looking for like say in some sort of social interaction like um back in pandaria what was the normal thing that you would do when you log in every day oh uh, what i would usually do is like my main thing is that i like to make gold in the game and stuff like that so i would be running around the world and stuff like that killing the different mobs between like the different rares or the different like finding those little niche spots to be able to kill like things really quickly with mm -hmm. for the most amount of my time uh, so 
Uh, but like they're with the way that garrisons are really set up and stuff like that, I haven't really been able to. There hasn't been really anything for me to really leave my garrison. I can make hundred, hundreds to thousands of gold every day for uh, in my garrison, where uh, without even having to worry about auction houses, they're like self-sustaining. And like I'm not a big fan of uh, like uh, when I like in Pandaria when I flew around and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I always liked to like whenever I saw somebody flying as well. Since it was kind of a small area and people kind of found their little areas that they like to be at, I would uh, always go and inspect them and check and see what they're doing and see if they need help and stuff like that. But I haven't really, as I, I think I've been outside my garrison like, I don't know, four times since I've hit level 100. Uh, most of those going to Orgrimmar, that way I can get uh, do my auction house and then, mm -hmm. eh. <laughs> Yeah, no, Step I know. outside and get my and get my bling drawn every now and then. I know exactly <laughs> what that's like. Um, now, do you do the garrison quest at all, or like have you been following up on that and just you know, I don't know, left for any reason? Because <laughs> th th there aren't a whole lot of reasons to leave once you're there. I mean, the the big thing that Blizzard was always talking about, you know, why they would always have, uh, you know like the auction house and the banks and everything in the major cities is because they want them to be popular. They wanted people to go there, to leave, to interact and everything. And it looks like that a garrison is essentially the exact opposite of that philosophy. I mean, I have a building that is my bank, that is my void storage, that is everything, my transmog, all that stuff. I have another building that could be, you know, my auction house if I wanted to. What's the point at leaving at that and then? I mean, there's no reason. If I want to do PvP, I go to Ashran. Other than that, there's no reason to go to Warspear, or the Alliance version of Warspear. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I thought was interesting is that how like self-sustaining the garrison is. As long as you do your missions, and you get uh, if you have the salvage yard, you can get all the different transmogs, so you don't have to do old raids. You can. Uh, you can use your garrison resources for materials to do your dailies as long as you have the, uh, oh, what is it, the one that you can recruit your own followers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You get the one that increase your garrison resources, so you're always, like, really high on your resources. It's just really interesting that, of like, I've, I just haven't had any reason to leave my <laughs> garrison at all. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, Alessander said in the chat room that in Pandaria, I would fly around for hours collecting herbs and ore to sell or to craft with. In Draenor, you can't fly, and collecting the few herbs and ore is a pain in the... Stars. Yeah, stars. <laughs> and the pain in the stars. I mean, when I look at the stars, I scream, why can't I herb in ore? Mine. Whatever. <laughs> it's, it's real. But um, I frequently ask, why can't I herb in ore as well? Mm-hmm. And... People look at me puzzled. Yeah. So, at this point, John, you've gone on record saying that you're, <laughs> to put it mildly, an antisocial person when you play WoW. Um, yeah. You, don't, you could even get rid of the, to, when you play WoW from that sentence, and it would <laughs> still be accurate. So, John, you've gone on record saying that you're an antisocial person. Yep. Um what are you seeing? Like, is this a detriment to your gameplay? I mean, we have a weekly raid that we go to that you said that, you know, with work, sometimes it's hard to get there and everything. Um, are you seeing just a negative impact on, you know, just social interactions and everything else that um, are going on in the World of Warcraft right now? I think that garrisons... So, it's weird, because I am of two minds. I think garrisons are a cool idea, and I think I've said all expansion long. I think it's a great starting point for an idea. Um, but I think, for me, even playing as kind of an antisocial person that doesn't really care about the uh, multiplayer part of the MMO equation so much, like, it, it's even detrimental to me because it's... It's taken an experience where maybe I don't acknowledge or want to be around the other players all the time and has allowed for that, but still confined to a smaller area. Instead of feeling like I have a whole big world to be antisocial in, 
now I have this tiny little world to be antisocial in. And uh, so as a result, like, I think even for my play style, like, it ultimately didn't work out probably the way they intended um, because I feel trapped in my garrison. And I don't know, maybe next expansion, maybe this is all a big trick. They're trying to get antisocial people like me to feel trapped in the garrison, and then next expansion, when the garrison's gone, I'll be like, finally, I'm free! I want to be in the world! I want to talk to people! I want to socialize! So, who knows? We'll see what happens uh, next expansion, but... Yeah, I don't know. I feel Sometimes I feel trapped in the garrison. But when I try to think of reasons why I should leave the garrison, those reasons are either not very compelling uh, or not very numerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And, okay, so I have seven characters that have garrisons now. I mean, only one 100. And I've just been going through, you know, kind of working on crafting and everything for them. And I'm realizing it's like there's not really much of a point. I mean, I'm sending ore to my jewel crafter and my um, engineer. I'm sending herbs to my scribe and my alchemist from my main garrison. And then I'm just kind of like, meh. You know, the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter all that much. I've gone through, you know, a lot of the garrison quests and everything. And when I'm out in the world, I see people, you know, who are doing like the Apexis Daily or something like that. But it's, you know, I have a bodyguard, so I'm kind of being pretend social. (laughs) But I mean, for the most part, there's not a whole lot that's drawing me out of there unless, you know, I want to go do like the pet battle dailies or something or... Um, I'm going to raid because in all honesty, most of my game time now is just sitting in the garrison and doing old content and raiding. And I think I've gone on record saying that I'm, you know, much more social than you are, John. I go out, I do things and everything. And slowly I'm going through the blizzard given reasons to leave, you know, whether that's the garrison mission or the tavern quests to go do dungeons, which I mean... LFD, that's not social anyway. Um, but All right, because <laughs> when you look at it, you realize what mis- what a mistake you've made. Yeah, I, I go in there, I, I just say hi, everyone. Sometimes they say hi back. We go kill stuff, I loot a thing and kill a dude, and then I come back and get a new toy to collect. Woo. I've done, I mean, I've done all the in missions, mm-hmm. except for one where I didn't turn it in the same day, and then the item despawned, because it turns out those in mission items expire after a day so now i technically have a quest complete but i have to run the dungeon again to get the item again that sucks it's really dumb lillian voss one day i'm gonna have that item for you so, <laughs> no, um, no you won't you brought up a really good point though um and something that i've kind of thought about which is this whole idea of we have a follower like Mm -hmm. Even when we're technically running around in Draenor, you know, alone, if you take a follower with you, you've got a companion with you. And we've got a garrison full of these followers. And it still feels completely lifeless in the garrison. And it's one of those areas where, you know, let's pull it back. Bioware is well known for their storytelling and yes. characterization and all of that. That is their biggest strength. Um, Blizzard seems terrified of it, and they hide in a cave whenever it comes around and like to pretend it doesn't exist. So I would like to see... They don't have to be Bioware. Like I like what Blizzard does. I like what Bioware does. But I think with regards to both companies, they could kind of come a little bit closer to one another. You know, maybe Bioware could work a little harder on their gameplay and systems sometimes. (laughs) Maybe Blizzard could maybe pay a little bit more attention to story and characterization and creating compelling characters. Um, Why not make these characters that we're running around with more interesting? I mean, Vivian has like eight lines of dialogue that she says. And that's as close to a personality as she gets. There's really no way to interestingly interact with her. Like, your garrison could feel a lot more alive if these characters actually seemed to interact somewhat. Mm -hmm. And occasionally you'll get a little flavor dialogue while you go by, you know, a troll say, you demand man, 
you know, something like that. Like, and you kind of go, ha, he said Mon twice to me. That's great. <laughs> but they could work at making these, you know, more interesting characters. They could make it, uh, the mission structure more interesting. They could try and tell more compelling stories with them, make you care a little bit more about them. And uh, I would have really liked to have uh, seen maybe a little bit of that. And maybe it wouldn't feel like a ghost town in my garrison, even though there's all these NPCs in it. Well, okay. Idea forming, and partly it's because I've been playing Mass Effect, and partly because of what you've been saying. Um, (laughs) Bane, if I were to tell you that every single follower you collected had some sort of, say, I don't know, a loyalty mission or something, you know, it's a quest line, maybe one or two quick quests that will kind of fill out more of a story on who they are more than just like, um, hey, I'm out in the wild and you killed those (laughs) things and now I'm pledging myself to you. Um, Like, you know, after you get them into the garrison and like maybe it boosted their item level or, you know, their quality or something like that. Is that something that you'd be interested in? Uh, I think it'd be an interesting idea. I don't. I don't really know. Uh, it depends how far I have to travel, because <laughs> it takes so long to get places. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna you? go out on a limb and say <laughs> you are one of those that believes that flying is pivotal to a good Warcraft experience. Uh, for me, yes. And <laughs> you didn't tell me we were hiring a crazy person to come on this show. You're already on it, John. You didn't tell me we were bringing in another crazy person to be on the show. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Let's dig into that a little bit. Um, what is it about flying that makes it, um, you know, if we can tie it back, makes the game more social? Is it because you can get somewhere faster, or is there something else entirely that I'm missing? Um, main thing for me is that I like to see, like, what my surroundings are a lot more. I'm a, because I'm a, I'm a visualist, I like to see, like, an area, like, uh, maybe if, like, even if the map was, like, more detailed about, like, the way things look, like, uh, uh, like if you were going across and it had, like, an aerial view, like, as you're crossing the world, then I would, I would, I would be okay with that as well, but the, uh, it's just so hard for me to know what what's where and like what's going on in the areas when because I don't want to be missing out on something that's like you know 15 feet away from me that I just can't see because there's a rock in the way yeah as I'm passing in this specific way <laughs> uh, do, being able to fly I have more options of being able to go around places the speed's always nice of course but mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's even if the speed would still be at mount speed of ground mounts, I I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Well, let me introduce you to something called a Venus feather. Yeah. Get a Venus feather. <laughs> Doesn't it have a cooldown though? Well, ten minutes, but I mean, you're up in the air <laughs> a long time. Fly somewhere and do something for ten minutes. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go on like an epic old man rant and be like, these millennials always got to fly everywhere. I can't <laughs> ride for two minutes. Got to fly. Heaven forbid. I got to wait 10 minutes for a cool down so I can fly again. Because heaven forbid I take a road. Unless you're in the Grand. Then you I wait the 10 not minutes. I being able to fly in the Grand. Okay, yeah. let me say this. Uh, so, first of all, uh, Bane is insane. Um, he tried to kill Batman. He got killed by Catwoman. We already know that there's issues there. But he's wrong because flying is not that important. I'm going to say it. I'm going to make everybody mad at me. Flying doesn't matter. We survived an entire original vanilla experience with no flying. We've survived going through most of the leveling with no flying. And almost every single expansion except one is not needed. But Blizzard did one thing that still royally pisses me off. They said they took a firm stance on flying. I respected it. I understood why they did it. I agreed with it. And then they made a stupid zone like Nagrand, which might as well be a great big (laughs) F you to not being able to fly. Yeah. 
I agree with you on that. You didn't sell me on it, Blizzard. Negrand <laughs> sucks. If you let me fly in Negrand, I would be completely happy. Well, John, Cause... I've got a zone for you. It's called okay. Old Negrand, which is technically newer Negrand. <laughs> and if you go through the dark port... No. If you get a mage to port you to Shatrath, then you can go and fly in the Grand. It's just not, you know, the one that you want. Yeah, it's not the one that, you know, has Matters. reasons why you would want to fly. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Cool. I, I, think, I think flying is overrated. I understand it's, it's a limitation, like, and people don't like when limitations get put on them, so I know that there are people that really hate it. Obviously, Bane is one of those people, but... <laughs> You know, you know, like, right around. Like, it's not... Uh, so, I think this gets back to my bigger issue. If you want to know my real problem with garrisons, here's the real problem with garrisons. The real problem with garrisons is what got me into World of Warcraft was the world of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. It was a giant continent to ride around on, not fly around on, to ride around on and explore and see cool things and do cool things and discover cool things and it felt like a great big world and part of the reason why I thought Pandaria was such an awesome expansion is it felt like a living breathing world and it was that feeling all over again riding around eventually flying but mostly riding around discovering new things and and seeing this this big world and exploring this big world Okay. Draenor is kind of all about your garrison, and it's this super tiny place that's fun to upgrade for a little while, and it's kind of got some cool things, but then when it's all said and done, you're stuck in this garrison, and it doesn't matter what else is out there, because everything you need is right there in your garrison, and maybe you teleport over to our PvP zone, I can't even remember what it's called, because I don't care. Yeah, that place. Yeah, that's right. uh, and you're there for two seconds, and then you come back, and you're in your tiny little garrison, and that's that. So that's my problem. They took out the world, and they made it this tiny little room that looks like everybody else's room, and they said, well, now you got all that gameplay experience. General. <laughs> so you're not so, a, uh, an exploratory person unless you have the freedom of flight. Yeah. Okay. Typically, yeah. Yep. Um, when did you actually start playing WoW? I, well, I, uh, started on a private server because I thought it was the real thing, and because oh. I had some <laughs> misinformative friends, and, uh, but that was, uh, that was Lich King, and then I, uh, then I started playing retail on, uh, Cataclysm. Okay. So, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Like I said, millennials. Privileged millennials. So he's a privileged millennial. <laughs> ben, Back in my 16? day, Ben. No. <laughs> well, see, like, uh, I don't, I don't mind uh, running around on a. Uh, for some reason, I don't mind running around Azeroth because it's a, mm -hmm. it's an area that, like, I understand, I know, it's a place that I've seen, like, I've seen it from above enough times. To be able to know what's around me and where the mobs are at and what I need to do and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and uh, but with Draenor, I'm like, no idea what's around me. Um, hmm. oh my gosh, Ben, I think we've discovered this like interesting, like I feel like we are not smart enough to write a paper on this, Ben, but I feel like we should. Like I feel like we're tapping into some sort of like danger sense. Like maybe even bordering on a phobia type of deal. Not like a I'm not trying to say you're weird. Everybody's got phobias. I'm scared no, of spiders spider sense. and bees <laughs> and spider bees that we call scorpions. Like yes. it's like I got phobias too. But like it sounds like you're like you don't like to be surprised by the danger of mobs. Like oh, I have no problem with dying from mobs. That'd be uh, like if there's. Uh, like for instance, if there was flying, if there, like I know in uh, Pandaria, there's that one area that was uh, that would uh, shoot you down if you're over by them and stuff like that. But like it's uh, it's the like I I don't see like if I ah uh, wording is hard. 
like if I see, uh, I want to be able to know, like, it's no problem if there's, uh, like a bunch of mobs in an area, but I think it'd be cool to, like, uh, there might be, like, 15 mobs over in this area, and that's kind of cool to go and fight and everything, but there might be 20 over at another spot that I can go and fight, and, uh, it'd be taking the same time, but I'm able to kill more, feel more awesome about it, and stuff like that. And so you're looking for efficiency? Yes. Yes. Do you like math? Yes. <laughs> 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 Hence why I do gold pretty much all the time for the game. Ben, I think I'm on to something here. <laughs> okay. Alright. What's, what's your theory? I, I want to know if people who are the most upset about flying not being in Azeroth all like math. Well, John, let me answer this. Uh, math was one of my favorite subjects in school. I really I like it. I'm decent at it. and uh, But I also like science, too, as well as the arts. So I don't know mm. if I'm the best test uh, the How best do you feel subject. about flying? Um, you know what? I don't mind that we're running around on the floor. Or the ground, okay. <laughs> whatever you that want to must call be it. The, that must be the arts in you speaking. Yeah. In dire um, conflict with your math sense. But let me put it this way. Um, when I started we couldn't fly until level 70 and even then it was after saving a crap ton of gold and then in order to fly well you need your friend to finally get pissed off that you can't fly fast enough so he gives you enough money so that you can fly fast enough and then you pay him back over time thank you isle Cadanus and john but did i pay for your flying yeah you you gave me the last um i think 1500 gold because you were tired of waiting for me <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Because I'd be like, let's fly there, and I'm not as fast as you. I was like, Damn it, just give him the money. Then he yeah. can go. Hey, and that was a lot of money back then. I know. People. And like, I paid nowadays, you back. Nowadays, if good Ben like that. wants a thousand gold, I'm <laughs> like, all right, geez. Yeah, it's just no. whatever's in your pockets. Like, here, here's a thousand. You need another five? Here. <laughs> and he later paid me back by stealing all the Brewfest mounts. From yes, me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but then he made a sky golem for me, and that was yes, was I did. Night. But no, I, I I think that you're onto something. I think it 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 might have to do with um, when you actually came into the game, because I think that Cataclysm is you know you see all the content, you're able to fly for everything for the entire leveling experience. It makes sense, you know. There's Plus, the way that the game was set up then, there wasn't a whole lot of, you know, exploration going on in those zones. It's just kind of like, up, down, done. Up, down, done. Up, down, done. Um, with Pandaria, when it came out, like, there was a lot more exploration on the ground, but you're able to fill in gaps later on when you're flying. So, um, and I'm sorry if you touched on this, but when you were leveling in Pandaria... Did you go off the beaten path, or was it just straight to your quest and then back to turn it in? Oh, I I actually don't quest very often when I do my uh, when I level. That I sounds like a thing a math things. guy would say. That <laughs> <laughs> likes to kill things. <laughs> I want to feel epic. <laughs> okay, so that goes into it's nice to yeah, it's fun it, to kill them and then uh, get your get, get higher levels, get gear, and then really stick it to them later because they were a struggle and now you can see your improvement. Okay. It's amazing. That's totally a math guy thing. That's a math guy thing. <laughs> hmm. Bane's you know, a math guy. I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> it, it makes sense. You know... Knowing how to battle. It, it's really interesting kind of looking at it this way because, you know... There's, uh, you know, so many different types of people who play this game, different, um, you know, personalities, different likes, different interests, which is the same thing, but I said it anyway, but, um, <laughs> there's always good to have a list with three things on it, doesn't it? Ben? Yeah, it really is. You know this too, <laughs> because you did the same exact thing. Um, but just seeing, you know, the, the base you know, kind of wants and needs from a leveling experience, you know, for instance, or exploration or things like that is really interesting because um, I guess the best way that I could put this is, is I think you're the first person that we've actually had on the show who isn't as into, you know, questing and story and everything as, say, John and I are. 
So getting a different perspective is really interesting, especially when it comes to flying and, you know, the leveling process and stuff. Because I know people, um, at least like when I level, you know, I always level going through the questing process. So other people I know, like say Jules, um, she'll go through the questing process, but then when she's doing an alt, it's dungeons all the way. Where with you, you're more interested in, you know, numbers, what's the fastest way I can kill this stuff to level up, see the progress, and move forward. Mm-hmm. That's, yep. that's really interesting. <laughs> I, I didn't know, like, it's someone in- that you existed. <laughs> it's alien. I just want you to know, it takes forever to level in the game without questing. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> you have oh my to God. do at least some quests. <laughs> you're in L1 horrible. Forest killing boars. I know. Yeah. <laughs> if only they still gave XP for, you know. You should write 90s. a book called Leveling the South Park Method. Like. <laughs> you should be able to kill uh, these things over here. You should be able to okay, kill them over so, here. Okay, so, but like you said, like, it's clearly not an efficient way of leveling. Mm-hmm. What makes you say, I would rather just sit here and kill a bunch of enemies than follow the steps that this quest takes? Like, whether you read the text or not. And be done sooner. <laughs> ADD. <laughs> 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 I see. I just see a big group of people, and I want to like. I just want to fight them. <laughs> wow. It's, I just like the. Maybe I just like the combat. Coming the game out of your more. garrison. <laughs> There's someone. <laughs> There's people. Get them. <laughs> wow. No, that. I mean. <laughs> Then we're alienating the guests. Stop it. No, no, it, it's not that at all. It's just, it, it's an interesting new perspective that we haven't experienced before. I mean, I, I can't imagine what it's like running out into the world and, you know, like maybe starting, uh, you know, a quest or whatever, seeing a whole bunch of stuff and killing it and then being all squirrel, squirrel and then going and killing another one. And sorry, I had to just because you said ADD. Okay, no. Um, so a new question for you. Um, since you didn't go through a lot of the questing, you know, quest lines and, you know, the story content and stuff, did you make sure to hit every single one of the, the, what were they, the extra staging areas or whatever, where you just essentially go in, kill a whole bunch of stuff, and then you get a whole crap ton of XP at the end? Oh, yeah, those, so, like, I would, I would kill all but one, and then try and, uh, and then, like, try not to kill anything, and then, uh, uh, go and get one of the XP things for my garrison and then come all the way back. Oh. And <laughs> wow. That was like the one thing I was actually interested <laughs> about because they felt so rewarding. <laughs> Did it feel like Blizzard made a feature just for you? I think so. <laughs> the, I mean, they just felt like they gave so much more XP than anything else. And oh, it was, that was, oh, I felt so good. <laughs> Wow. Didn't have to go to a specific place to go and get some uh, quest from somebody to go kill something. I can just go kill it. <laughs> that right is there. so fascinating to me. Like <laughs> I saw that content and I went, who is this for? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I tried to figure out what the point of it was for so long. I was like, why did they do this? Like, what does this serve? It served Bane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and probably a ton of other people that we, we just we haven't experienced or talked to. You know, they're sitting in their garrisons, too, just waiting for more Doing content to happen. Doing math <laughs> and uh, other mathematic-type things and beating up groups of people for gathering. <laughs> <laughs> well, now here's the funny thing, because um, when you talk about math, the first person that comes to mind is Ted Semi. He's one of our raid leaders. Uh, he loves spreadsheets, and he does a lot of things having to do with spreadsheets and math. And he is someone who, gosh, I would say, um, you know what? I, it's starting to come together. I think he mathematically quests, if that makes sense. He, go, he looks at it from a very, you know, observational standpoint, goes in, does it, you know, but the whole time he's actually taking in all of his surroundings and, and seeing and experiencing it like tenfold for what, you know, you and I do, John, and same with you, Bane. You know, he's like encompassing everything. Like he's the super leveler, if I had to say anything, because he's doing it efficiently, mathematically and exploratively. So Tetsemi? Do you think Tetsemi misses flying? 
We should call him and find out. Just text him. Be oh. like, hey, Ben, do you miss... Or, hey, Tet, do you miss flying? And if he says that he does, then we're on to something. Okay. Ben. <laughs> Hold on. He's math people. <laughs> do you... Blizzard needs to make a math MMO. And then they can tailor each MMO to what people like. The math MMO can be flying in straight lines, super efficient, feel really good about yourself all the time, and there will be some sort of math thing going on. I don't understand because I don't understand math. <laughs> uh, and then there will be the other MMO, which will have a lot of story and a lot of reading and questing and lore. That is interesting. Wonderful, beautiful lore. Did you text him? I texted him. I'm I was just seeing if he's online time. really quick. Okay. Oh, he's online. Hold on. <laughs> I always have a lot of trouble with uh, questing as to like knowing where to go when for the story. Because I don't want to go ahead of myself and then be like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> Which is funny because Tet had that problem in the grand. He did. <laughs> ran into that exact problem in the grant. Oh, man. This is really interesting. Okay, uh, he's typing, so it should be any second now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, another fun fact about Tet is he could not answer this question with a yes or no. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we can expect a long, detailed answer from Tet Semi. <laughs> Uh, I'm really interested to see what he thinks of it when he gets to this part in the show. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be like, man, Azeroth Roundtable's talking about me again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did say he would be who we would want as a follower in our garrison. That is true. And that now true. maybe I need Bane to be in my garrison as well. <laughs> He'd be really good for garrison invasions because the sight of multiple things clumped together in one spot <laughs> would just drive him into a furious rage. Yeah, I never had a problem with the uh, garrison invasions. I've always gotten gold on those. See? I've only done like two or three of them, though. What did you think of those? Was that a fun thing to do in your game? Those were fun, yeah. Uh, the thing is, is that I don't really have that many friends that I've found that uh, have them and stuff like that, so... Uh, whenever I so, uh, get a notification from a friend saying that there's they have a they have an invasion, then I'll go join. But typically, I don't really <laughs> I don't really get out much to <laughs> find. <laughs> well, that's I why I'll just stay logged in uh, AFK to wait for things <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, that's why if you do have friends who do have them, then you know just have them invite you, and then you do you know view party leaders garrison. Then it's like you never left. So yeah. you know, it, it's similar <laughs> with you yeah. being the person who likes to kill things. Really, you should be the one that's getting invaded all the time. Just go to those areas where you kill a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. go crazy, and uh, then they'll attack you. And then you can just say, like, hey, I got a garrison invasion. And then you will have friends like crazy, because if you have a garrison invasion, everybody. <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> That's very true. Okay, so I'll have to check that out then. Is that the little exclamation point at the board in that room? It's one of them. Um, <laughs> there's a quest to actually do it, so that'll give you some gold and some Apex X crystals. Or you could just go to those areas where those quests would be and just slaughter everything. And it's then like the blue skull on the map. Yeah, isn't and it? Or is do I have a mod that's doing? You have the that mod that me? does the blue skulls. Oh, uh, okay. That's uh, handy notes. <laughs> That's the hard thing about mods sometimes is it's hard to tell, like, okay, is this something everybody sees or is this something that just I see? Yeah, so. I try not to use any add-ons. I only have a few that I actually use. Is okay. Recount one of them? Uh, <laughs> it was when I raided because I wanted to count with people, but, I mean, to see where I was on the uh, during Siege of Orgrimmar, but other than that, nope. <laughs> okay, we have All an right. answer from Tet. He All says, right, what, what does Ted have to say? Oh, he's still going. I told you, he cannot <laughs> say yes or no. It's going to be a big thing. Okay, well, I have three <laughs> texts that I'm going to read, and then he's writing more right now. Um, so he says, I don't miss flying. I miss the convenience of getting over obstacles when I'm trying to complete a quest or an achievement after hitting max level. I do that also miss answered. seeing... Hold on. I do also miss seeing the different mount animations in flight, but I uh, can go to Old World... 
uh, to see them. Uh, hell, most of the time I use ground mounts and flying zones because nothing can aggro on me. And then still waiting for the next one to come in. So, like I said before, how he's like the optimal person when it comes to leveling and everything. Oh, and he says, uh, and Avi uh, Aviana's or Avina or whatever's feather plus Goblin Glider slives, uh, solves most of the issues in the Grand or Spires. So, there we go. Yeah, everybody but, likes that feather. Yeah, it's great. I have one. I now. don't remember where you get it. Is it a it's an in, in reward? Yep. Okay. Yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. so the fact that he doesn't miss it until endgame and everything kind of goes along in, in my idea so, to support your theory, John, because... While he's good with the exploration and the questing and everything, you know, that we know him for, he wants to be the most efficient that he possibly can afterwards. So I think we're on to something here. Our Conan in the chat room says he misses flying because he likes to get high up all the time. And see the landscape. He gets like he likes to get high all the time. <laughs> and see the I landscape. Mis I misread that and I actually misread <laughs> my attempt to misread it to make it sound like Mark Conan was just getting high. <laughs> Sorry, Mark Conan. He 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 wants to see the landscape. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I don't know what we decided on garrisons. <laughs> I feel like this topic swayed very quickly into let's learn about math, people. It's quite alright. <laughs> um, so long story short, I think we know we can all agree garrisons are antisocial. Yeah. I do. I do. Okay. So let's. Let's bring it back to the topic real quick. Let's do a little roundtable discussion here. Um, <laughs> what like do you we are think they do. could do to make Garrison's a more social, more open experience? Do, do they need to just scrap the idea, or do you think there is a cool way that they could expand on it and make it better? Because we're all about improving here. So, Bane, it was your question. I'm going to put you in the hot seat first and say go. So, like, I have no idea about, like, if they can even implement it, but I think it'd be interesting if it wasn't zoned anymore, but the buildings were. Oh, like, okay. The built the building spots because they have the spots specifically for each building, so and you can tr change those at any time. So it'd be and I think if they changed the buildings to be zoned and the people inside not zoned. Okay, so of course, then that would be crowding because everybody would be everywhere at all times. So I don't know how that would be. It It'd would be, be more like social. Dalaran all over again. <laughs> or if the horde garrisons were actually the same size as the alliance garrisons, oh, we could yeah, deal that with that. Nice. <laughs> yeah, because that's that's BS. I don't care what I say. I'm that's BS. The alliance garrisons <laughs> are huge. Although the horde is, I thought the horde more... one was bigger, just spread out. <laughs> oh, totally. Not. I heard the horde one was bigger. I don't know though, because <laughs> I haven't upgraded. Just a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't feel but, like it, guys. It's not the size of the garrison; it's the buildings you construct in it, <laughs> and the spikes you put on, of course. <laughs> well, I don't know. In my level two garrison well, on the alliance side, of seven for some reason, it feels way bigger than my horde one does. Like I'm like town hall is up here. And then if I want to get to, you know, one of my, my buildings, it's like way down there. So yeah, you need to stop talking about how big your horde one was Ben, Cause I just, it's I've pretty lost big. Sight. I've lost, it's a good size. Yeah. I've lost no complaints. The conversation all together. Just the right size for all the followers. Cool. So, uh, garrisons are antisocial. Um, I think that the way that they can make it more social is uh, to, you know, give more reasons for people to actually visit it. So, you know, they have the uh, the mob bosses coming in and everything, or the mob bosses, whatever. You know, invasions. They have raid bosses. It, it's interesting, but they need to do more with it. I mean, at this point, in order to actually be more social in your garrison, you need to bring more people in, and it's just uh, not the best. Now, John, what about you? How can they actually fix it? Um, I don't know. I, uh, I got distracted by the chat room. Um, so I think... I, I, okay, so let me back up. I believe that the next WoW expansion is going to be uh, island and water themed, and I think the garrison tech is going to make, <laughs> be made into pirate ships. I genuinely believe this. And so I they're going to assassins, 
Assassin's Creed for it. Yes, I think it's going to be <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I think that's already an improvement. I don't know. I just think that they need to... I, I think they need to not worry about making whatever our garrison thing is the be-all, end-all of doing everything in the game. They need to give us more reasons to get out in the world, and it needs to be more than, oh, I right-clicked this treasure, and I can sell it for 100 gold. Like, it needs to be something good. Like, they have to give you some cool reason to get out in the world. And I have said this, I will continue to say it, as many podcasts as I need to say it before it actually happens, but... <laughs> I think Blizzard needs to come up with a way to do dynamic events. I think they need to take, go ahead, steal, it's free, the idea of a DM in Warcraft that can make things that are dynamic and fresh happen. And I, I think that would really liven up the game. If unexpected things can happen in WoW, that is to the game's benefit. Like, if there are things that you can't log on to MMO Champion um, or, or any of those websites and see, like, that is a good thing. I think that the reason you see games like Dark Souls or, you know, games like the Monster Hunter series where there's really obscure mechanics built into the game, I think part of the reason those are popular is because we've gotten to this place where gaming is so tutorialized on how to do everything and the information you need is so easily available on the internet that it takes a lot of the adventure and the excitement of learning things out of the game. And I think Blizzard needs to find a way to put the random element that you can't predict back into World of Warcraft. Kind of like how it was at the beginning when we didn't have all these websites to tell us exactly what was going on all the time. So mm -hmm. that's what I would do. So shots fired at WoW Insider and uh, WoWhead and all that stuff? No, I think they do a good job. I think they should keep doing what they're doing. I just think it would be cool if there were things that they could not put on the website. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Uh, in fact, when 6.1 came out, I know that I saw on Twitter a couple of people, say, uh, people saying, oh my gosh, this quest isn't on Wowhead. What's going on? Like, they kind of just <laughs> totally lost it. Like, what am I going to do? Where do I go? It's like, read the quest text and just go there. <laughs> or, you know, look at the addition on your map that's like a big blue circle that says go here. Or, you know, there, there's stuff in game that holds your hand and gets you there. Um, but it's funny, John, you mentioned how everything is just, you know, like it, it's seriously tutorialized and, and just pulls you from one place to another the whole time. I remember, I mean, it, it's a big joke. What happened to Man Kirk's wife, right? Well, you know what? I was doing that quest during the Burning Crusade era. I had no clue where to find her. And then suddenly I kind of stumbled upon her. I'm like, oh, I didn't ask, you know, trade chat, which is good because people would have made fun of me. But um, it, it's one of those things where when you don't know what's going on, it it can be really frustrating. But when you figure it out, it's like, oh, cool. Instead of just, um, you know, things are like so small and so minute and, and so detailed that you need to look them up. It, it's not as rewarding because even if you do find out on your own, you're just going to be complaining, saying like, oh, well, that's stupid. So it, that's what's going, what you have to do and all that stuff. So, yeah. I don't know where I was going with that other than I found Man Kirk's wife. Good for you, Ben. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> not everybody does, turns out. Yeah, yeah. Some I people know. really struggled with that. That's true. All right. Well, uh, do either of you have anything else to add? To our grand old discussion on flying and garrisons. <laughs> next next expansion, flying garrisons. Oh my god! <laughs> He's gonna combine garrisons it all. Sky. Yeah, cool. Well, with that, um, we got a submission for some celebrity Murloc theater. Celebrity Murloc theater. That's right, folks. Celebrity Murloc Theater. It's important. It's very important. John, why is it important? Celebrity Murloc Theater is important because this year, for every show that we do that contains a Celebrity Murloc Theater, we are going to donate. I'm going to donate $2. Ben's going to donate $2. Rose's going to donate $2. A whole bunch of other people are going to donate $2. And even though I didn't name their names, they're also very important. We just don't have a comprehensive list, so it's hard to remember each week. Yes. 
And that money is going to go to Child's Play at the end of the year. It's going to be a nice donation, and it's going to make some kids happy, and that's important. That is true. So, what is a Celebrity Murloc Theater? Well, guess what? There's three different ways that we're taking it. It, whoa. Um, <laughs> there are three different types of Celebrity Murloc Theater. Uh, the first one is you doing an impersonation. Impersonation. It's the end of the show. Can you tell? I can't talk. Um, doing an impersonation of a Murloc, like Bane is doing right now. <laughs> exactly. And the second kind is of you doing an impersonation of a celebrity doing an impersonation of a murloc like John is doing right now. Muggle, goggle, 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 goggle. Muggle. Muggle, gurgle. Muggle, Why gurgle. did you do Bane hands to do <laughs> Batman's voice? I don't know. To throw you off. <laughs> like, I gotta cover my mouth like Bane so I can talk like a Batman. <laughs> I know. Uh, or the third way is to take a Murloc sound of either you doing it or the actual game sounds or anything else and inserting it into some sort of popular entertainment like movies, TV, music, whatever. Just have fun with it, send it in, and help us raise money for Child's Play. Uh, this week we have another submission by Roe. Bro, thank you very much for sending it in. And uh, I am actually really curious to see what it sounds like. So here we go. Now that's going to be in my head for the rest of the night. Thanks, Ro! Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. Oh, did you hear that they're making a new DuckTales uh, cartoon? Coming out really? in 2017. Are they, gonna, like, they need to keep the same intro. I have a feeling they're going to update it and it's... They get all, like, super jazzy and stuff? Yeah, they're going to make it dumb. They need to keep the same intro. That theme is perfect. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> wow, that's great. Thank you, Ro. And you know what? The children, thank you, too. I need he to didn't get a put sound. the children cheering at the end of no, the he didn't. thing, though. Yay! Yay! That was kids. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thanks, Ben. You're Good welcome. To know. Uh, so I would like to thank uh, What's in a Name for leaving a five-star review on iTunes. What's in a Name says, great podcast. Ben and John keep it fun and informational at the same time. It's like listening to two buddies discussing the same thing I enjoy and often find myself wanting to join their conversations. Me too. You can, John. All right, finally. Yeah. I can be a part of the show. <laughs> After hours of screaming at this podcast. Wow. I'll finally be a part of it. Good job. Hi, everybody. John here. <laughs> <laughs> so now to get incredibly inappropriate. Hey, Bane. Hey, what? I noticed that you're wearing a t-shirt. That is just <laughs> scary. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> yes, man. I am wearing a t-shirt. Thank you for noticing. Why, Bane? You know what? That t-shirt goes incredibly well with your facial breathing apparatus. It does, and it bulges in all these awesome ways to show off my manly physique. Wow. But you know what I like best about it? What? It has a cute little merlock holding a microphone on it. Really? I like microphones because I can't use them properly. <laughs> Remember that time I was in the stadium and I used a microphone and nobody understood what I was saying? Yeah, I remember that. 
I am envious of that murloc, Ben, and that's why I wear this reminder on my chest everywhere I go. But I'm also a fan of podcasting. Really? So I got my very own Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt from Slashloot.com. It was easy. All I had to do was use the World Wide Web to go <laughs> to Slashloot.com, select t-shirts, podcasts, and find the Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt. That's great. Bane, if I were to actually already own an Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt like I am currently wearing, is there something else I could do to, to maybe buy and support the show? Ben, you only inherited the, the Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt, but I was born in it. <laughs> Must have been pretty big when you were little. It was huge. <laughs> So it, but if I also <laughs> wanted to support the show, I could also pick up a pendant or something for my keys. Oh, where would I find that, Bane? From geekasylum.etsy.com. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going back to my hole-in-the-ground prison. Have fun. <laughs> so head to slashloot.com or geekasylum.etsy.com for your own Azeroth Roundtable swag. Don't say swag. <sighs> Stuff. Merchandise. There you go. Better, okay. Uh, <laughs> Bane, how can people find you? <laughs> um, probably on uh, Twitter. I'm on uh, at, well, at wow gold helper. Uh, if anybody ever needs help, I mean, uh, I'm, uh, as long as I'm actually online, I don't mind helping people with whatever they need of anything. Really doesn't matter what. Even if I'm gonna go and learn something, that way I can help. It doesn't matter. <laughs> now, is it okay if they're outside your garrison? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Cool. Just want to and then make I sure. have a reason to leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, folks. Hit them up. <laughs> Uh, John, how about you? How can people find you? If people want to find me, you can... Uh, I almost said find me at Slashloot.com. <laughs> really? Buying a t-shirt! <laughs> um, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Revendon. Uh, that's R-E-V-E-N-D-A-W-N. And uh, here, on this show that you're listening to. Turns out, you can totally hear me on this show, too. That's good. I'm glad. Download it. Today! Like you, like you did. <laughs> Unless you're listening live. Then download it anyway. It helps our numbers. Pirate it illegally. Arr. Show us. <laughs> if you're looking for more from me, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Al the Mage. Um, I'm also on a couple different shows like Geektopia and Battle Pets. And also I uh, guested on episode 107 of the Stardies. The Stardy Zone. The Stardy Zone. <laughs> Mick, the I'm very sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, 107 of the Starting Zone. I uh, feel like a doof. Uh, anyways, if you want to follow the show, we are on Twitter at AzerothRT. Uh, you can find the website, AzerothRoundtable.com, for all of our past shows, current shows, and future shows. Not yet, though. You have to wait for the future to happen oh, first. Oh, man. I was so excited. <laughs> I was like, where's this thing going? downhill i can already tell <laughs> yep and uh we're also on itunes and stitcher of course uh, if you have any questions comments or you want to contact the show go ahead and email us at uh azeroth roundtable at gmail.com com and do the show stuff seriously and uh last but not least our intro Are contains music from that? volatile reaction by kevin mcleod can you find more of his <laughs> music at that. incopytech.com that was vulgar no i said con uh-huh yeah uh, that's not what I heard. That's what I that's said. That's not what the people heard. <laughs> okay, chat room, what did you hear? <laughs> Type it explicitly <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> and show's over, by the way. So, post-show! <laughs> show's over, folks. We're all going home. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go put...